so did I. But they're starting off 2015 on a pretty hot note with their first entry into the high-priced mid-size Android tablet category with this. This is the Dell Venue 8 7000. So obviously the design is the number one thing that's gonna stand out here. First of all, it's the world's thinnest tablet. I actually didn't know that when I got it. It's six millimeters thin, although not exactly sure that's a good thing being so thin. Uh, it has square edges and being thicker wouldn't make it any more difficult to hold or anything. And it's actually kind of hard to pick up off a flat table. So I wouldn't mind it being a little bit thicker or a little bit more rounded to house some extra battery. But there you have it, it's super thin. And when you take a step back, it's probably gonna remind you of the Sharp Aquos Crystal that I reviewed not too long ago, but blown up into a tablet size. So it has the three thin bezels around the top and sides and one big chin with a front facing speaker and front facing camera on the bottom. And this is a pretty polarizing design. I think it's actually really cool for a phone, but it's a bit different on a tablet. Phones these days are mainly for use with one hand in portrait mode, but tablets like this are more often used with two hands, so it gets switched to landscape a lot. This Dell tablet really seems like it's meant to stay portrait and stay in one hand, because when you turn it sideways, things get weird. You know, is the speaker supposed to be on the left side or on the right side? There's no palm rejection technology like iPads have, so you gotta be careful about how you hold it on the thinner side. I don't know, it seems like the design is better suited towards phones but you can make it work. Now this speaker on the chin here, it's a stereo speaker actually, and it gets pretty loud, which is difficult to muffle by accident, but there's no stereo audio image since everything is coming from one side, which is a shame because it's actually a really good speaker. But you do have, of course, this good chunk of metal over here on the side to grip, to hold it, and I gotta say, it's overall a very well-built tablet. Got handed to Dell with the metal chassis and the tactile, very clicky buttons I liked. I'm sure you could bend it if you tried hard enough, but at least you don't sit on your tablet. So the one thing that actually did annoy me about the build materials was this glass on the back. It does house the rear facing cameras that I'll talk about in a bit, but it's a serious fingerprint magnet, which is not pretty. And also the first one of these tablets that I had shipped to me from Best Buy, the packaging was a little bit bumped in, just a little bit on the corner. But because the tablet sits so close to the edge of the packaging, this little bruise turned out to be a big crack on the corner of the tablet, the weakest spot. Obviously this isn't gonna happen to everyone, but I have to mention it, but my new one obviously has no problem. So these mid-sized tablets are getting more and more beautiful and powerful, and this is in addition to both of those trends. So it's rocking an 8.4 inch, 2560 by 1600 OLED display, and it is beautiful. Uh, you can see with these Dell Live wallpapers and all kinds of stuff, it is seriously one of the best looking tablet displays I've ever seen. It's 16 by nine, so it handles videos well, movies look fantastic, and that's really what these tablets are all about, right? Media consumption, and also gaming. Gaming looks really good. Again, if you can get past the weird grip ergonomics and the one-sided speaker, this is about as good as games can look on an Android tablet. Super bright, colorful, vivid, saturated, great viewing angles and everything, it's really nice. And with all these pixels, gaming performance is also very impressive. But now I'm just, you know, playing regular, not super intense games like uh, Leo's Fortune and Riptide GP2 and Real Racing 3, but it handles them all really well. And I guess you could say portrait games are its specialty with audio coming out from the front facing speaker. It feels kind of like this thing was built for breaking Temple Run records. Anyway, past gaming, all these pixels tend to make near stock Android elements look pretty small, but also very sharp. Uh, and in everyday performance with this 2K display, I did see dropped frames. Not really like lag or slowness, but definitely dropping frames, which made animations look like they stutter even though they go the correct speed. Uh, it's rocking Android 4.4 KitKat, hopefully Lollipop very soon to improve performance a bit. And it's fairly lightly customized, so nothing too crazy like a heavy skin, but some stuff is added for the Dell and Intel experience. But it stays pretty close to stock Android in the look and feel. So it's rocking an Intel Atom quad-core processor at 2.3 gigahertz and two gigs of RAM. And it has little additions like Max Audio, which stays permanently in your notifications, but it's really just a shortcut to a super simple equalizer. Uh, and stuff like My Dell in quick settings and other things to flip to silence and Intel Smart Video, they all kind of sit buried in the settings. Little things that I used maybe once or twice to demo them, but then never really found myself using again. So I just really used it like any, any other Android tablet really. Uh, and the rest of the experience is pretty familiar, so it's great for that. Stock Android KitKat is compelling to use here in portrait mode, which is fine. It's just weird because it feels like a giant phone experience 
instead of a small tablet experience. The tablet has three camera sensors on the back that are pretty much impossible to take a picture with without blocking them somehow, but uh, they're supposed to combine to take eight megapixel photos and also record depth information using Intel's RealSense technology. It might remind you of what the HTC One M8 did with its duo camera. Uh, sorry, Dell, I didn't really use it all that much. It's a tablet, and I don't really use my tablet to take pictures for any sort of exotic reasons other than to just have one to scan barcodes or something. So it's there. I, did, I only really used it once because it required the Dell Gallery app to actually take advantage of any of these features. It looked like it worked okay, but yeah, I didn't really use it. So at the end of the day, this is one of the more head-turning, interesting-looking Android tablets out there, and it's a risk. It's not necessarily my favorite design. I still think there are better ways to do a mid-sized tablet, but I'm glad Dell took the risk, and taking risks is good. That being said, I don't think I would recommend this as my first choice for a tablet in this mid-size category. There are still other things like the Nexus 9, the iPad Mini Retina, and even the Nvidia Shield tablet that I think are all better buys for this approximate size and price. Uh, I, I would probably recommend this more if it was 100 bucks less, but still good on Dell for taking the risk, and it's their first dip at getting their feet wet in the premium Android tablet category. I would still give the edge to this in the display department over pretty much any other mid-size tablet, but it depends on how much you weigh that against the other things. So there you go. 